Hey there, it's Melissa with MelissaEsplin.com and Calligraphy.org. I am slowly, slowly working my way through the 100 Days Project, and we are on day 32, doing Ranunculus, but not without messing up first. This is my first attempt, and it was not good. You'll see why. I did not add enough color, enough vibrancy, enough details, and enough white space inside the flowers. So I'm going to show you how I figure this out, the different steps that I'm taking. And um, yeah, let's get started, right? So here I am using the Prima watercolor, watercolor set. I've got the Tropical and the Classics different palettes. They are so vibrant and colorful and saturated. They really have been fun to use. So I'm also using three different brush sizes. I'm using a size 12, a size six, and a size one liner. The liner is really crucial for those little tiny details. All the products that I'm using are linked in the description below, so you can definitely check those out. Now I'm going to mix up three different colors, a light yellowy green, and I'm just keeping it really transparent and watery with a bright yellow and a slightly deeper yellowy orange. All three of these are gonna mix really, really well together. Now I'm gonna start with the lighter green with little tiny strokes going around in a circle. And I don't wanna keep it too circular. Now I'm adding the little bits of yellow and I'm blending and touching that bit, the bits of green to blend it in really, really nicely. And I'm doing this really, really quickly here. It's sped it up 200%. So um, just to keep you from getting super bored. I'm slowly melting into the other colors, the yellows and the oranges, and adding even a darker orange along the outside in asymmetrical shapes because you don't want a perfect circle for this. And then I'll be dropping in little tiny bits of green and allowing that to melt into the already wet paint and blend things even more. Now I'm getting a smaller brush. This is my size six brush. And I'm gonna add some more details on this dry, dry surface right now. I've allowed it time to dry. Now I'm adding that darker orange that I've already mixed up and creating these oblong little leaf type strokes. And this is what's gonna create those nested petals that come all the way around in the ranunculus. And I'm mixing, I'm going back and forth between the darker orange and some lighter uh, yellows and um, so that I can add a, a lot more variety. And that's going to create that depth in the shadows. I'm just dropping in more pigment to those wet spaces, just, just a little bit here and there. And, you know, don't be exact and don't be uh, symmetrical at all with what you're putting in there. I'm going to add some green just to darken up those details in the center. And now I'm going to blend it out just to, you know, smooth out some of those hard edges just a little bit. Now I'm going to add the leaves and the leaves I'm actually just pulling out and wrapping around the center. And I'm really just drawing these lines around. It's not anything too exact or really anything special. It's just bringing things around into that sort of pointing back into the center of the flower. And, you know, you may change things up if you're doing multiple blooms, but this is just one thing that I found just looked really nice with the singular forward facing bloom. As I finish this up, I'm just going to add more these leaves and then start dotting and adding different shapes in there because I don't want everything to be exactly the same. Adding little bits of dark to the already wet pigment also helps. Now that we're pretty much done with the leaves and the main flower is dry, we're going to add those tiny details with the liner brush. This is where the liner really comes in handy. You can load up a lot of pigment, but you can also still create these nice little tiny details. And I'm coming in and creating that texture for each petal, particularly on the outer petals. I'm not gonna do this so much on the inner petals, um, just really working those lines out. And I'm not going too much darker than my actual color that I used for the flower in the first place. I just need a little bit of texture in there. 
And if you have too much, you can always go through and lighten it up with a little bit of water. But I'm going to add just some smaller shadows inside my flower and I'm pretty much done. Just adding tiny little bits, blending and melting those harsh lines out. It really, really helps, you know, blending things out, adding darker details. I'm really going to darken the deeper colors just so that it pops just a little bit more, adding a little bit more to the centers, melting that, and then using just even almost a glaze to add a little bit more texture to those flowers. Let's finish up the foliage on the outside. I like to add a little bit of a complementary color. So the blues for yellow flowers, purples, you know, something like that. Adding little dots here and there and little brush strokes almost gives you the sense of little filler flowers as part of a bouquet. You may want to add a few more details so you feel like it's done, but that's it. Check me out on Instagram at Melissifer while I finish out this 100 days project. I've got 70 more to go, <laughs> uh, but we're getting there. We're going to get there for sure. And uh, stay tuned, melissaesplin.com for more printables and tutorials. Take care and 